This is Kurt Polish with Madison Modpo. Today we are going to discuss Eternity by Frank Lima. On my right, Scott, Roger, and Jim. And uh, Roger's going to talk first a little bit about Frank Lima, and then Jim's going to take over and help us uh, walk <laughs> through the poem. Uh, well, Frank Lima, uh, some of what I know about him came from his obituary, which he passed away not too long ago, and the New York Times had a rather lengthy obit for him. 2013. Yeah, 2013. Uh, he was very much well known by the members of the New York School. He was a Puerto Rican, and so he was probably the only Hispanic that I know of that was in the New York School, which has kind of an Anglo-Saxon feel to it from the other poems, the other poets. The other thing, Frank Lima was an astonishingly good chef. And for a while, he was the chef at the Windows on the World, at the top of the World Trade Center, which was a place where you couldn't get out, out of that place with it for less than $100 a person if you went there for a meal. But he was really, I think he might have been a sous chef there, but anyway, he was known for, uh, for his cooking. He was also very involved in the New Yorican uh, Poets Cafe, which was a, it was more than just uh, uh, Puerto Ricans, but it was a lot of Latinos, Mexicans, different people that accumulated around the New Yorican Cafe, which was on the Lower East Side, and they had a uh, a small establishment with a little stage and people would go there and they would be, it was kind of a place more for performance poetry. So anyway, I'll turn over to our uh, philosophical genius. <laughs> a couple of things. He grew up in Spanish Harlem and when I was in the Peace Corps I got a chance to live with a family there for a week. Uh, he had alcoholic and abusive parents which reminds me a little bit of the Hart Crane story. But he seems to have survived it better because he lived to be 74. Uh, he got an MFA at Columbia and was there with Kenneth Cook? Coke. Coke, yeah. Uh, that we read. And he, as a chef, just a, a, a side to that, he was an assistant chef at the White House with JFK. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and some people uh, described I, I'm unfamiliar with his poetry till this piece uh, as being very sensual, very slangy, very intimate, and I think this poem is not in his conventional style. Uh, a couple of quotes from Frank Lima. All poetry is autobiographical. And I love that statement because there's a, there's a, as Kurt correctly observes, there's form and there's content, and they both play a role. But sometimes in, a, in the academy, we get obsessed with form, and we don't realize that people are actually trying to struggle with explaining their world. And um, another quote from Frank Liebman, in search of your own experience, which is a very Zen quality, you know, that's the essence of Zen as far as I'm concerned. So I think there's uh, that. Now this poem, I memorized it, and uh, let me read it. <clears throat> In the beginning, there was no end. The ground we walked on was a memory. Our shadows, false stories. Our clothing, space without time. Darkness was the color of angels. The stars did not weep. It's very sparse and very simple. The title, Eternity, Timelessness. What's this poem about? Time. It's a philosophical, artistic, aesthetic philo uh, commentary on time. Well, in the beginning, <clears throat> is an obvious reference to Genesis. There was no end. Right. Timelessness. Yeah. In timelessness, there's no end. See, I thought of this 
as what is the nature of eternity? It could be where you find eternity in the moment. Um, you know, it's rather than worry about time is linear, to understand this moment here now. If you live it deeply, um, you start to sense something eternal. Yeah. Okay. So um, the ground we walked on was memory. Yes. So. Um, that implies that there's a, humans around to have a memory. And I, I'm not getting, you know, literally how you walk on a memory or metaphorically. Our shadows fall stories. And, you know, I know they're in a couplet, but I was um, kicking around the notion that maybe they're not related. You know, we want to say our shadows, just implicitly you want to put in the word were. Our shadows were false stories. But I was kind of leaving it open. For well, I think, I, I think he leaves it open because it's a topic nobody's ever going to be able to nail. Yeah, what, what, <laughs> what he Including the Big Bang. The ground we walked on was a memory. In other words, we... We're walking on the ground, but it's, it's only a memory because we're, there's an insubstantial aspect to our being. Mm -hmm. As, you know, I think the, there's a, these people are, the people that are in this eternity phase are not really quite substantial. You know, they're not like regular human beings. They're walking around there. A kind of ghostly uh, individuals. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. There is no end. Yeah. Ground we walked down was a memory, and, and I guess that saying was our own memory. Right. But it could be someone else's. What is memory. Genesis other than a memory? Right. But, but, but it's out of the past, our memory, that we get these stories. And they're false. They're false. Genesis. compared to the Big Bang Theory. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, this think is it, a hypothesis. I think it works. I, I, this not, is my hypothesis. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm right. All, all I would say is this is kind of pure poetry in the sense that there is no uh, immediate... It's not rational. No. So you're left to be... to, to feel something magical and I think that's the essence of poetry anyways to put you into uh, a mood where your thoughts can float a little bit and you don't nail them down and you don't have a specific yes. uh, meaning you you know you could say these words over and over like a mantra yes because this is the kind of I agree with you uh, when I think of angels I think of white robes that's it. So he says their da the darkness was the color. I think and a lot of historic, wings. Right, with the, wings, but the darkness the, 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 the darkness is just sort of implies the opposite, right? Right, exactly. And that is uh, historically how you describe fallen angels. Yeah. Uh, and so the essence of evil and sin and false stories we tell about ourselves that motivate there, us in the present moment. There is, you know, the, the darkness here is uh, our shadows. Um, we have space. Space without time. I think that's a profound philosophical comment on also, his part. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I also thought of just a, in, um, clothes being worn by like an invisible person. Or there's nothing inside there but just clothes. It's a silly notion, but a clothing space without time. Like there's, there's nothing substance. There's nothing wearing the clothes that surround what would normally be a human shape. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. I also thought this was interesting that this poem came from a chapbook called uh, Incidents. 
oh. in incidents of travel and poetry. Mm. What an interesting concept that, you know, you, you read poetry and it's a travelogue for your mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. And the stars did not weep. Well, we think of stars weeping as, you know, we're attributing to stars human quality. That's right. And he's saying, we're, no, no, we're not doing that. No, and that's the essence of Hawking's description of the Big Bang. Or he's saying the stars did not weep because they're callous. And, uh, well, I don't know if that's so much, but yeah. we we can't we don't attribute these these qualities to stars. The Big Bang was what it was. Yeah. And live with it. And stars are certainly not. They don't have any emotions. They're just matter out in the universe somewhere. Right. And and. And eventually they will collapse, the theory is, into another black hole, black but hole. that's not necessarily the end. Well, the reason I, I want, you know, the space without time is, it just to me means, when are you being in space without a sense of time? And that to me is eternity, that moment. That's right. Where you are right there. Yeah. And you're and, not thinking about the future or yeah. the past. That's right, and that would be the essence of a Zen notion. Because that's the uh, that uh, clothing space without time. Mm -hmm. and, and you could go back to Kant, too. I mean, Kant says the two fundamental uh, foundations of consciousness are space and time, some combination. And he's playing with that. Is he saying there that, you know, we have to ignore time? No. It's part of how we live life. But we can have a different take on time. What so, do you think of that? It's profound. I like most of what you say. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, I really like what both of you guys have said. Um, I like the idea of this poem being open and, and Roger's comments about it doesn't necessarily, and I'm paraphrasing, but it doesn't have to be you know, some sort of rational, we don't have to reduce this poem to some kind of rational statement of this is what this poem is about necessarily. Yeah. Um, it can hit us just an emotional deeper level that we just resonate on. And well, I think, I think if you, on. Yeah. Also, if you wanted to compare it, this is an abstract poem. Very just abstract. like we have abstract very art. Good. And very people good. get very upset because they can't see mm -hmm. uh, something you know, in an abstraction. But that's the whole point of it. Exactly. It's to remove, you know, they're not giving you a piece of information. They're opening you up to the sheer aspect of color and shape. Okay. And that's what they tried to do, and they did it brilliantly. And that's where that's the world we live in today. Exactly, it's a highly abstracted world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's great. And now that I think about it, this poem is minimalist, right? It yeah. is just and it, and it and it becomes increasingly minimalist yes, as you go, go read on. it. He pairs it down. Yeah, he pairs it down. And I think it's brilliant to be discussing eternity in a poem that's you know, so... Compact. Compact. Um, well, he was fixing you a gorgeous meal. <laughs> well, I had a totally different take on it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. No, no, well, maybe it, it, it all boils down to the same thing. I, I saw this as the individual's journey. Uh, in the beginning, there was no end. When we're born, we don't... Th we, we, there, there's no end because we don't think about death, like a terminus. Mm -hmm. uh, the ground we walked on, as, as we think back on our life, um, uh, the ground we walked on was a memory that our past is, is nothing tangible, but it is a memory. Uh, our shadows, our false memories, how we, <clears throat> how we remember our reality isn't yeah. necessarily the reality. Yeah, we've embroidered it, so uh, we fixed it up. Our clothing, uh, space without time, um, when we look back on our individual 
life. Um, the the tangible things that we're wearing isn't isn't part of that memory. It's it's the space and the time that we lived in was our past. Um, Darkness was the color of angels that in the darkness as a child or even as a as a grown-up the fantasies or the uh, fantasies slash religion mythology comes out of the darkness um, and the stars did not weep um, that, again, going back to our past, we don't think of the universe weeping, that that comes later, um, and that that is not the reality. Uh, the, mm. the stars don't weep, they just exist. Uh, without compassion, mm. and that that's the individual's journey. Does that any of that make sense? Yes. It makes total sense yeah, to me. I'm left with this feeling <laughs> of the poem that this is not a happy poem, yeah. right? Well, I mean, we've got darkness, uh, stars did not weep, the ground we walked on was just a memory, Shadows, it feels, you know, almost noir. <laughs> well, you know, I have a different take on whether it's happy or not. For me, when you can look through the layers of interpretation and uh, layers of, of uh, pa uh, whatever, layers of paint, whatever, that covers over the essence of something, uh, if you can look down deeply, you see, well, this is what is. And to me going forward, whatever that means, or my next thought or my next choice, it's comforting to me to look at life that way, at, its, at what is, rather than looking for some palliative, which is to say I don't want to be comforted, but I'm comforted by that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this isn't a Mary Oliver poem about paying attention to the world and finding its joys in the images around us. This is stark, dark, yeah. and, um, and nonetheless haunting and beautiful. 